and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to create an Airtable web scraper with no code. So in order to do this, we will be using ParseHub, which is a free web scraping tool to obtain our data. And we'll also be using the data fetcher extension, which enables you to connect Airtable to any application or API with no code. So in order to begin, we want to be in our Airtable base. And here we're going to install the data fetcher extension. So up here in the top right hand corner, you'll see this extensions option and you'll see the add an extension button. This loads up to the following screen where we have the find an extension or script to search bar. And here we're going to search for data fetcher and that should pop up like so. Select add and then select add extension. The following screen will load where you can either create a free data fetcher account or you can simply continue with Google. You'll arrive onto the following screen and you can select that big blue button, create your first request. Now that we're here, we need the website data that we are going to be scraping. So in order to do this, you will be downloading the Parse Hub app, which is a free web scraper, like I mentioned before. Then once you have that, it should open up like this. Here, we're going to select the new project and just over to the left hand side, you'll see where we need to enter that website that we'd like to extract data from. So I'm going to use the URL of reuters.com forward slash technology. Take that URL and paste it back into this URL box like so. And then I'm going to select start project on this URL. Now over to the right hand side, you will now see this interface of the website. And this is where you can select which sections of data you would like to scrape. So you can go ahead and choose what you would like to scrape for yourself, whether it's headings or sections of texts, images, prices, etc. So for this example, I am going to choose this heading and here below you can see this is going to choose the name and also the URL to extract. And you can see this in the left hand side where you have extract name and extract URL as well. Then we're going to select the get data button. And then once you've done that, select run. As you can see, this data is now being collected and immediately the data is ready for us. So we are going to head back to our Airtable base where we were before. And now from that application, we're going to search for ParseHub. Really nice and simple, select ParseHub. So under authorization, you will need your ParseHub API key. If you select the click here button, that will direct you to your account overview page. And just above your email is where you will find your API key. Once you've copied that API key over, you can come back and paste it into the API key input box, like so. For the endpoint, we're going to select import data from a project's latest run, and then we're going to retitle this request. So we're going to retitle the request as fetch website data, just up here where it says request one, like so, then we'll select save and continue in the bottom right hand corner. Now we'll be brought to the following screen and this is where we can select that Reuters.com project underneath project or whichever website it is that you have scraped. Then for the output table and view, we will leave this as table one and grid view and simply select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. Select continue. And now we will arrive to the following page, the response field mapping. And this is where you can select the fields you want to import into your Airtable. So I only selected these two options. So these are the only two that I will want to bring in. But if you clicked on the whole page, you'll have a lot of options here. And so to manage that for the fields that you want to bring into your Airtable account, you can simply turn those toggles from green to gray, just like so to switch them off, or you can select filter all as well to turn everything off and then use this find field to decide what fields you would like to import. Once you have selected the fields that you'd like to bring into your Airtable, select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. And as you can see, these fields are now being created. Select show output table. And here we are. Data Fetcher will now create any new fields in Airtable and import the website data from ParseHub to Airtable when you run the request. 
but you can actually make this happen automatically without you having to do a thing and instead use our scheduling tool. Now, in order to do this, we want to open up that extensions option again in the top right hand corner, and this will immediately pop us back open to the request that we have just created for Parse Hub. You'll see the name as you've titled it here, and we can open that up. Here it has all of those settings that we've already created. But if you scroll down a little bit, you will see a schedule option. Now you will only be able to see this if you have a paid data fetcher account. And for this example, you will also need to have a paid Parse Hub account as well. I really recommend that you do upgrade your data fetcher account as this will allow you to schedule any of your requests with us so that you can have all of your requests running automatically with without you having to think about it and know that all of your records will always be up to date. So in order to do this, we want to select that authorize button and select, I understand, let's authorize. Here, we are being asked to give data fetcher access to our Airtable. So you'll see this add a base option and you can select all current and future bases in all current and future workspaces, select grant access, and that immediately switches on that schedule option. So you can see we now have this option to have this request running as frequently as we would like and on which days as well. Then we're going to go ahead and select save in the bottom right hand corner and close that window over. So hopefully today you have learned how to create an Airtable web scraper with no code using Parse Hub and also Data Fetcher. But if you do have any questions, you can always reach out to us here at datafetcher.com where we also have a full length blog on this exact topic if you prefer to learn that way as well. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn today. I really hope you have a good one.